What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by the channel. Today's project is this Craftsman trimmer and the problem is that it's leaking fuel from the bottom of the fuel tank. Strangely enough, this seems to be a reoccurring problem for this trimmer. Let's take a good look at it, find out what's wrong, and hopefully we can fix it. In this video, we try and repair this trimmer. However, it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. I don't know how you feel about Craftsman trimmers, but what I can say about this one is that it has a very large engine and it's got plenty of power. What I also can say is it's got a lot of weight as well. The other problem is that the tank is on top of the engine. And what that means is that the fuel lines have to go through the bottom of the tank. And when the lines go bad, you have a fuel leak. So I changed the fuel lines on this trimmer last year for the same leak, but it seems to keep happening every year though. The problem isn't the fuel lines, it's the type of fuel that's being used. Ethanol gas is damaging the fuel lines and it's going to keep doing it. So to deal with it, we're going to change the fuel lines again, but with a twist. Now if we pull on the fuel lines at the bottom of the tank, you can see just how loose they are, and that's not good for keeping fuel in the tank. And since there's a remote primer ball, we need to figure out where all the lines go first so we don't get confused when we put the lines back on. To start replacing the fuel lines, we need to remove the rear cover. So if we move the top line on the carburetor, we can see that the top line on the primer bulb is moving as well. And that means that the shorter port on the primer bulb goes to the top port on the carburetor. And if we do the same to the bottom line on the carburetor, we can see that it goes to the fuel line at the bottom of the tank with the white ring around it. That means that this last fuel line at the fuel tank goes to the longer port on the primer bulb. Now that we know where all the fuel lines go, we can now safely remove them and see just how bad the lines have gotten. And I have to say, this line is extremely damaged, it's not even flexible anymore. Now this particular line with the white ring is the fuel filter line, so we can't pull it right out of the tank. Instead we need to pull the ring down and then cut the line, and after that we can just push the whole thing into the tank and we'll fish it out later. Once that's done, we can now remove the line at the bottom of the carburetor. So here's the fuel filter and what's left of the old line, and the only way to remove it is to carefully cut it and remove it from the filter. So the normal fuel line I've been using is not the higher quality Tigon line, but it's a decent line just so long as you use 100% gas in your mixed fuel. Now the twist I'm going to go with is to use this black fuel line, which is supposed to be very resistant to ethanol. We'll see just how resistant it is if this thing starts leaking again next year. The first line we're going to run is the fuel return line. To make things easier, cut the end of the line at a steep angle and then push it into the tank. Now once in the tank, we can then reach into it with some bent pliers and pull it out of the tank. We can then cut the angle piece off and install a hollow plastic piece and it'll keep the line from coming out of the bottom of the tank. Now you don't need this piece, I just happen to have it available. Once the plastic piece is on the end of the line, carefully pull the return line back into the tank until it stops. Next cut the return line to the length of the primer bulb and then we'll install it on the primer bulb in just a little bit. So to install the fuel filter line, we'll do the same as we did with the return line, but before we push it into the tank, don't forget to put the white ring back onto the line.
After cutting the angle piece off, we can now install the plastic fuel filter and then slide it back into the tank. If we look inside the tank, we can see that the filter is about half an inch above the bottom of the tank, which isn't good. We need to carefully push it all the way down using the pliers from before. Now, if you push it at a bad angle, you'll break the filter, so be very careful. Once the filter is near the bottom of the tank, you can then slide the white ring up against the bottom of the tank, and this will help keep the filter in place. After that, push the line through the plastic housing, and then cut the line to length near the bottom port on the carburetor, and install it. We can now slide the return line from earlier on the longer port of the primer bulb. The next line to be replaced is the last line on the primer bulb and it goes to the top of the carburetor. Now I don't have a lot of line left but it's just enough to make it. This line does have a tendency to collapse when it's bent too tightly so I would have liked about an inch more. Now before we put the rear cover back on, let's put some fuel into the tank and check the whole system for leaks. After that we can start it, and if we need to, tune the carburetor. With the cover off, it also makes things easier to see what I'm doing. It doesn't want to run on choke, so let's try adding a little bit more fuel at idle by turning the screw closer to the engine about a quarter turn counterclockwise, and then we'll try starting it again. Now before adding any fuel, let's try turning the adjustment screw on the idle in just a little bit. And if that doesn't work, we'll add some more fuel. Now since I've been pulling the rope with the choke on, I don't want to flood the engine, so I'm going to turn the choke off.
So I ended up turning the low adjustment screw about half a turn out, which allowed it to finally start and idle. I did try to adjust the high adjustment screw, but I turned it back so no changes were made there. So another reason why your fuel tank might be leaking fuel at the bottom is that there might be a crack in your tank near a seam. If that's the case, the best thing to do is to replace the entire tank. So my question is, how many times do you need to have the fuel lines replaced before you decide to use non-ethanol gas? Or is it because 100% gas just isn't available in your area? I know what I would do, but I'm more curious about your answer. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time. Please feel free to ask any questions, and I hope to see you in my next video.